Kelly and Sherry Davis. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you for having us, Stephen. We're excited. Yeah. Excited to be here. Okay, Orlando, I'm going to start with you. Uh, tell me about Urban Consulate in Session, how you come up with this and uh, what you guys are hoping to achieve. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. First, I want to tell you a little bit about Urban Consulate for those folks who may have been living under a rock since 2015. <laughs> Urban Consulate is a space. It's, pretty, it's been around a while now. <laughs> it's been around. <laughs> but it's a space where we can be people to have critical conversations about cities. And I came on as host in 2018. And we've explored uh, cities in a really multifaceted way from equity, equi equitable development to equity in jobs, equity in construction. We talk a little bit about uh, community development in that sector, just all kinds of things that amazing Black people are doing in the city and around the nation. And so in 2021, we released a survey asking our audience, what do you want to learn about? If you could learn about one specific thing or multiple things, what would it be, right? And so we got feedback around participatory budgeting, uh, equitable real estate, commercial development. Um, Architecture, but with an activist activist approach, mm -hmm. uh, uh, narrative power and storytelling, um, as well as uh, community organizing and you know artistry, right? And so we took that feedback and we looked. We did a national scan and a local scan of like who the experts are in these particular. Uh, areas and for participatory budgeting, who other than Sherry Davis? But like in the <laughs> arts field, right, we talked to Jessica Care Moore um, and community organizing, Davida Davison, uh, Darnell Adams for equitable development, Dr. Craig Wilkins for uh, activist architecture, myself for amplifying Black voices, right? Folks who are in this space doing the work who can teach an audience how to do it. And so it's our version of a masterclass, quote unquote, but we're calling it in session. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Sherry, uh, you're from the Participatory Budgeting Project in Oakland, California. Uh, I want to have you have our viewers learn a little more about that, but also how that connects in uh, with what Urban Consulate's doing. Yeah, totally. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, and it's so good to see you, Orlando. Um, the Participatory Budgeting Project's mission is to transform democracy, and at the center of that is centering community members most impacted by public budgets and decisions. And so that is Black and Brown people, folks that have been formerly and currently incarcerated, individuals that may have been pulled into the justice system or have a jaded experience by um, local government. They may also have an experience that looks like a long history of exclusion. Participatory budgeting and participatory democracy creates the opportunity for people to build power, to make decisions that are equitable, to build processes that are accessible, to decide over things that impact their lives in a significant way. And so we build and design process with community that looks like community members have as having a say over what the process design looks like that looks like um, building spaces for radical imagination, for folks closest to the issues, to really dream about solutions and use their practical lived experience to direct investments toward building communities that work for us, that are built by us. And I think that's really how it connects to the amazing work that's happening um, with the urban, urban consulate and with this opportunity for, for in session for folks to really understand or be introduced to innovative opportunities for folks to kind of direct um, what happens around them. So, so give me some examples of how this uh, ends up looking different uh, in communities where you're doing it than uh, the processes and the institutions that that we already have, like in, in government and business and uh, and nonprofit, uh, what does adding these other voices to the process uh, end up end up looking like? Participatory democracy and participatory budgeting is is radically different, and there this has been a growing movement, right? And so it's relatively new in the United States, but in the last thirteen ish years, where we've seen participatory budgeting grow, 
it's grown from instances where community members are maybe deciding on a couple hundred thousand dollars or deciding on maybe a million dollars in their community to multi-million dollar processes like what's happening in LA right now with the LA repair process. And repair is a long acronym, but one of those words, one of those R's in there is about reparations. Yeah. And so what does it look like for community members to be able to address harm by directing resources into most harmed communities historically and traditionally. That's what the LA repair process is like. And participants in that process are saying things like, wow, I've never had an opportunity to make decisions about public funds. I've never had an opportunity to actually drive resources to root causes that I experience and that my expertise, my lived experience in this community says are, are very present and valid. It also looks like one of the largest participatory budgeting processes in the country right now, which is in Seattle. It's a nearly $30 million participatory budgeting process that includes a multi-million dollar divestment from the local police department. And again, an opportunity for community members to direct how that funding is spent to build safe, strong communities. Yeah, yeah. How serendipitous is it, Stephen, that right now Detroit is going through budget season, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that we just erected a, a reparations task force to look at the feasibility of what that could look like in the city of Detroit. Yeah, so, I mean, we've yeah. been kind of circling around this this idea of uh, more participatory budgeting, more inclusive uh, decision making in the city. I think we're going to get there uh, sooner rather than later. At least I, I hope we do. Um, I do want to talk a little about Jason Reynolds uh, uh, and the session that uh, that you're planning with him. Uh, talk about that. Yeah, so uh, Jason Reynolds, he just finished his term as the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature with the Library of Congress. He's the number one New York Times bestselling author and literally one of my favorite people to read and to watch. And so uh, with the amazing experts that are featured uh, in, in session, we wanted a premiere that was splashy with a name that would get people out, revved up and excited about it. And Jason Reynolds, I mean, who's a better ambassador for learning in the United States than Jason Reynolds. And so on April the 5th at the Garden Theater at 6.30, uh, I will be in conversation on stage at the Garden Theater with Jason Reynolds to talk about his work, his love of learning, and to celebrate uh, the amazing experts that are in the series um, and to premiere the series that evening on April the 5th. So we're really, really excited that we got Jason to come and be a part of it. And, and the idea here is some sort of instruction for people. People are supposed to take away from this uh, a real empowerment around uh, the ideas and the material. And, and again, Sherry, that's where that's where your work really really overlaps with what they're doing here at Student Conflict. Yeah, I'm really excited for folks to hear from from all of the experts. I feel like my modules and in session are, are really an opportunity to think about what radical imagination looks like, um, what it looks like to bring an Afrofuturist lens to this work, what it looks like to think about us surviving and thriving and building a blueprint toward that. And so I'm excited to share those reflections. I'm really excited to also hear from the other incredible experts in the series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Orlando, talk more about um, how this uh, overlaps with this moment in in Detroit and the things that we are doing, the things that we are thinking about, the things that we are talking about all of a sudden, uh, this is a really different time than just three or five years ago uh, in the city in terms of how activated I feel like people are around this question of who gets to, to have a say, who gets to sit at the table, who gets to make the decisions. Well, I, first off, I love that question, Stephen, and, you know, the consciousness of Detroiters has been rising by the minute, and what is reflective of that is the in session series, and so when folks are talking about, you know, architecture and activism in architecture, when you walk into a new space, how does it make your soul and spirit feel, right? Do you feel welcomed by uh, the architecture? Is it reflective of a culture that is familiar to you? And Dr. Craig Craig Wilkins breaks that down immaculately, right? 
Uh, we are always having conversations around development. Just yesterday, the city council approved tax abatements for District Detroit. A lot of Detroiters have things to say about development and how it's done. Well, Darnell Adams has been at the forefront of a lot of equity-based development projects here in the city of Detroit, whether it is closing the gap on that capital stack in the performer or his role currently at the Gilbert Family Foundation and implementing a $500 million spend down, right? Mm -hmm. So he's the to talk about that and how he's been doing it. And for me, uh, what's so important is that Detroit is the largest majority Black city in the nation, right? Does the record reflect that? And if not, how do we get the record to reflect that, right? How do we get Black people on record? How do we get Black folks to recognize the power that already exists within themselves to tell their stories and to document what is observed is so important. And so, uh, so, so many things that are literally reflective of the time that we're living in. And we didn't, we didn't anticipate that, but it yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the hope is that uh, this adds fuel to the fire, right? This, uh, this pushes all of those things and all of that consciousness uh, to, to a higher level. Uh, tell people how they can attend uh, the, the talk with Jason Reynolds on uh, April 5th. Well, we're sold out. So sold you can, out. listen, we're sold out. We sold <laughs> out the Garden go. Theater. But there is a wait list. Uh, oh, more seats will open up. So you can go to urbanconsulate.com to uh, sign up for the wait list. And hopefully we'll see you at April 5th, 630 at the Garden Theater. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be exciting. All right. Uh, Orlando and Sherry, uh, congratulations on the work. And thanks very much for being here with us on American Black Journal. Thanks, Thank Steve. you.